But if you hear any noises today, it's because there's a raging gale going on outside. That's why we're inside making pots. Best time to do it. Now, today's video, we're going to be making, in effect, kind of a wicker pot. Now, this is actually willow. It's a willow, a couple of, a uh, couple. Well, I actually started with four willow trees, and we ended up with only two left after the farmer drove over one, and the other one died of a disease or whatever. So we're left with two willow trees. But it's enough. Now, the idea was planting those willow trees years back was that we had willow to do things like baskets, pots, whatever, just for fun. And this is the result today. It's going to be building a pot using that willow. Now, as you can see, I've taken some of the willow to start with, and I've bent some rings over, which is going to be the frame of the pot. Now, we're going to be doing it on a bit of two by one, because I'm going to be putting sash weights probably inside the pot, which are going to sit on this bar so it saves the the uh, going on the bottom of the willow itself. You could use tree branches, you could just whip them together. For time saving, we're just going to use screws and wood, you know, and the willow here, and then we're going to be weaving willow in and out. Now, this pot is not meant to be any kind of historically correct pot that they used to use in the past. This is purely me having a bit of fun with the willow. Something I've wanted to do is just build one, just to try it to see how it catches. And I thought, well, I'll build it, I'll film it, we'll take it out, and I'll bring you guys along to see how we get on with this. Now, so obviously it's going to have a few little challenges to start with, which is like how to attach these onto here. Now, you could drill holes in, but obviously you're going to weaken your frame drilling holes. Again, you've still got the problem of keeping it in there. Now, you could whip it on, but what we're going to do is we're going to notch it, we're going to drop those in, and basically we're either going to screw it, or you could put a piece of wood over the top, screwed over the top. Um... I'll figure it out as I go, we'll see which is the best method as we go along with it. Again, like I say, this is just purely for fun. Now, pot is going to be fairly small. Again, it's only a bit of fun, it's not meant to be taken too seriously. And it's not meant to be used for really for any kind of commercial use, that kind of thing. So, we're going to keep it quite small, and we're mainly going to use it for... Lobster, so the neck won't be too too big. It'll be big enough to take lobster maybe get a small Brown crab or maybe a small spider crab that kind of thing But it's just to see like I say to see how effective these pots would be now Of course they used to use them years ago and you'll hear people say about oh, yeah Those pots they were amazing and all the rest of it. They're great for catching this and that But what you got to remember back then is you were dropping a pot into an ocean absolutely crammed with lobsters crabs and all the rest of it and Times have changed. The seas just aren't like that anymore. You know, your average lobster of five pound is not five pound anymore. It's more like one and a half pound. So you have to take all these sort of things into consideration. What once was really good or worked perfectly fine nowadays may, may struggle. And of course, wicker is going to float. It's because you don't have the holes in the net. You're going to have a lot more drag with swell, movement of tide, pushing on the pots. So these are all sort of factors you have to take in. Right, well, let's get on and uh, get this thing built. Right, so there we go. We've got the rings on. They're screwed into place, notched, screwed in. That's how we've done it. It makes them um, pretty, uh, as you can see, they're pretty strong. And once you've got all the weaving in between, I may just put a bar in here because we're going to have one, obviously one end is going to lift up. And I'd rather lift the pot from the higher part, not here, not to tip the pot forward. So. All right, on to the next bit. Okay, well, it's another day for me, and for you, it's only a few minutes into the video, probably. Now, we had this storm, which I mentioned yesterday, and unfortunately, during the storm, we went out to get some of the wood to make the pot for the weaving of it. Took a look at the red tree, which is the main one for the kind of basket weaving kind of thing that we've grown. And we've got a standard willow tree as well. Unfortunately, that standard willow tree was leaning right over and was practically wobbling in the hole, falling. So I had to go out and literally cut, cut the top of the tree off so they kept about seven foot up to take the weight off to stop it toppling over to try and save the tree. Because obviously it'll grow back, but it needs to get more roots down. And while we've got these storms that are passing through, Right now, the actual storm is back again, another one. There's, I think, three or four in a row that are coming to try, like I say, try to save the tree. So what has happened is it's given us lots of branches.
see here, we've been out, we've, we've trimmed off a lot of the smaller branches. This is what I'm going to be using for the weaving. Like I say, normally I'd use this one because this one is actually, um, it's very malleable, the red one, and it's got a lot less knots in it. And this is the one that they um, normally chop down and grow for sort of baskets and things like that. Whereas the other one's just a standard willow, but it, it'll work the same. You can see it still bends. There's no problem there. So we're going to use that. Obviously, we're going to do, be doing it now to get it into the basket while it's still soft because I don't have to I don't want to let it dry out and end up having to um, steam it or any of that kind of thing to bend it around and I do want it as soft as possible when it goes in there but hopefully we'll be able to save the tree so we've got loads of it there's no problem there we were going to split split them because I did this with the red ones and they split really well unfortunately the standard one doesn't split so well there's a lot of knots Obviously, little branches that come off it and a lot of knots. It doesn't split as well as the red one. So we're going to keep it in hold. We're just going to try and use certain size branches, say, sort of like this or small ones, and weave them in and out. So right, back to the pot. And as you can see, I've started weaving in and out. We actually put the weights in already, which is some angle iron. I put the weights in now because we don't want to have to try and get it in the pot later because obviously, as you can understand, it's not net and you can't get through the holes of it. To fiddle around tying stuff so we've put the weights in now some old angle iron and then we're going to take the weaving all the way around it's not going to fold over to the end because we don't have long enough um, branches to use not nice straight ones anyway so we're going to do the ends separately we'll weave them into this afterwards and we'll probably put a separate bar in there to give it a bit more um, area to weave in and out of and it will give the pot a bit more strength from where we're going to pull the pot up at the moment, it looks as rough as anything. And when it's finished, it'll probably look even rougher. But no, hopefully it'll look a lot better once we finish. But the whole point around it, like I say, is a bit of fun. And I'm something I've always wanted to do is just knock up a pot out using pretty much sticks, so eh? Make a stick pot, put it down and see what we can catch. And it's the exciting bit of what can we catch in this? Are things going to go in it? Will they like going in it? It's going to be a very dark pot because obviously it's not like a net where the water rushes through. Will it be good? Will it be bad? Now we know that old wicker pots, people say, oh, they used to be really good and that. But you've got to remember there was a lot more crab and lobster around in those days than there is these days. So it'll all be a bit of a test. Now, one of the old fishermen said his father used to use the wicker pots. And he said the only problem with the wicker pots, he said, apparently the brown crabs used to crush the wicker when it's obviously dried out or gets older and used to break the pots quite often and get out so we shouldn't suffer that problem too much because we're going to be trying these in close anyway uh, we may take it out deep but we'll do we'll try the testing close first of all in the shallow areas and then if we get that far we'll take the pot out into the deeps and we'll give it a drop out right out in the deeps and see what happens there and hopefully it won't get dragged away or anything like that anyway let's get back to weaving this pot and uh, for you, we'll probably fast forward a bit to save you because it's going to take a little while, this. So we decided to put this here, which sandwiches the bottom of the wicker where they screw in, stops it from trying to split or lift up, and also protects the base of the pot, like I say, from the bottom of the wicker getting damaged against the rocks. This will be like, like a bumper almost. So it's only a thin bit of wood, but it should do the trick. Well, so at the moment we're just making the uh, neck. Now we decided to go with the red one. We did try a green one, it does work, but it's a little bit more awkward putting the green one in. So what we'll do is we'll do, I said the red one, it's more yellow, but it's a lot more, you see, you can bend that right around. So all we've done is we've taken a piece of plywood, drilled some holes in, stuck the sticks in, like these ones around the side. We're leaving them long so we can fold them over because this will be the neck. They'll go in there, those will fold over, lock it in place, then we'll fill up with more um, sticks 
and block up the hoo. So all we're doing literally is putting it in between like that and just weaving it in and out. Like this and then all we do is once we've gone round and we need another piece then we'll start and we'll alternate the sticks so it's like outside inside and that will do us for the neck so we're going to try and keep things as natural as possible without trying to use like plastic necks and like that for this because like I said this is the sort of thing you'd, you'd do out in the wild if you didn't have anything else you'd just want to get some sticks or some bendy sticks and weave it you could do it with other sticks as well as long as the stick is um as long as the wood is soft and not gone rock hard then you'll be able to do this and then all we do with the end bits is just tuck them into the one below lock them off kind of thing and then we put the next one in and again it'll take a little while just to build that up At the moment we are trying to work out the best way to do the end now normally you would just weave it if you were taking this off a beach you just weave it up and you're done but because we're doing it from a boat obviously we need to have a point where the rope is going to tie on now I want the pot not to be tied just on the base I want it to come off of here as well because I don't want the pot coming up tipped too far forward I'd rather have it coming up slightly up just to prevent lobsters from being able to just literally swim straight out I mean the chances are they probably wouldn't, but you'll always get the odd one or two that would find its way as it sh shot that way kind of thing. So I'm putting the same idea we're going to weave it, but I'm also trying to incorporate something along this line. Now the idea of this is, this will be screwed into this, this will be screwed into this, this makes a much stronger brace kind of thing, and then we can tie our ropes along here, and this whole thing then is much stronger. Again, if the pot gets jammed in the seabed, anything like that, um, I don't want it to end up losing the pot but normally if you were just doing this for a pot to take it down the beach you would do that you would seal it up you just put rocks in as weights you wouldn't even bother with the weights but obviously being on a boat we're going to do it slightly different and uh, have to accommodate that so at the moment it's just a case of working this all out that it's super strong and it doesn't fall apart and things can't escape so at the moment it's just like this obviously this isn't the finished product I'm just trying out different ways of, of making it and now I know this isn't going to be the way a professional pot weaver would make it but then again we're not professional pot weavers we just literally had an idea thought we'd go with a stick pot and make a pot and that's what we're doing So there it is, pretty much finished. There's a few little jobs we've got to still do to it before it goes in the water, but all in all, the whole construction, design, this is how we wanted to build it. Like I say, it's something I've been wanting to do for a very long time, or th thought about doing it for a very long time. Um, just never got round to it because, you know, didn't have, probably because I didn't have any willow. I mean, it doesn't grow on trees, you know. Well, actually it does grow on trees, so <laughs> there you go. But no, I wouldn't have had enough willow. And actually, the tree that we took this from um, we had these great big storms it became really loose in the ground we had to chop it down and literally chopped it in half or probably more than half took off the top to save the tree that's the only way of saving the tree otherwise it would have just pulled the tree down and we pretty much used up all the branches on this one pot from the whole tree which was remarkable I knew we'd use a lot but to use that much so we're kind of running low on willow at the moment we did use the green one we do have the uh, the yellow red one which we used for the neck because it's obviously a lot more bendy so it was to make that tighter circle now the neck itself is about five and a half to six inches wide now i know that i've used a six inch neck before in the past and i had a lobster which was around six and a half pounds in that pot so it will take probably up to around six pound lobsters it's surprising what size hole they can actually get in so it's not really designed for crab more than that, although it will catch, it'll, it would catch a, a fair sized brown crab in there. 
And spider crabs, it would probably catch a legal one, but it wouldn't be one of the biggest legal ones. But the idea is I don't really want it for spiders. It's purely for lobster or a few small brown crab if they happen to be around. Now, we haven't actually attached the base yet. That's what it'll take a couple of minutes to put that on. But we were thinking about using either slats. You could use slats of wood or to use the same thing, use the willow for the base as well, weave it or just put it across and screw it. It doesn't really matter. You could actually use thicker branches across the base. But what we've decided to do, a slight change, is we're going to put this in. Now, this is a metal grill that's been kicking around here, and it actually fits perfect on the bottom of the base. Now, one of the reasons that we're going with this is the weight. This is going to add more weight to it. It's already got the weights in, but this will add a lot more weight to it. It's pure and simply because where I am, we get a lot of tide, and I mean really strong tide. So you need that extra weight here. So that will help put that extra weight. On top of that, it's a bit of a time saving thing. The point of this pot is the main structure, the design of it, the D shape, using the wicker, seeing what goes in and avoid using sort of, well, mostly plastics and that kind of thing. You know, not using nets or pipes or anything like that, but just going with this. Now, this isn't something I'd want to make all the time for, for crab pots because pure and simply, I mean, this has taken several days. We, well, we haven't been working on it all day, but it does take a long time to put it all together. On top of that, it's the first one I've ever made. I mean, I've never actually, I say I've never done any wicker. When I was about probably seven or eight, I barely remember weaving a basket in, in a school class sometime. But I mean, I can barely remember that. And that's about as much as I've had with working with wicker or not with wicker, but working with willow and making wicker. So, um, yeah, so this is the very first attempt. I haven't bothered to read up on any of it either. It's just been literally cut some branches off the tree, make a frame up, put it together the way I think it would be done. And this is the result of it. And hopefully it should be fine. It's really strong, actually. It's, it's a, I mean, as far as a strong pot, I mean, it's all wood when you think about it. I mean, it's incredibly strong. The neck is rock solid in there and it should make uh, a good pot. How well it catches is what we're going to find out. Right, some of you may be wondering how we are going to bait this. Well, we can't use the bait bag system because we have to be able to open this from the outside to be able to put the boat bait in. And as you can see, the willow is, you know, we're not going to be able to do that pure and simply. And if we did, we'd have to put net there. And I'm trying to avoid using any kind of net, that kind of thing. The other option was a bait band. This normally goes around the neck, it stretches and you put your bait up under, but again, you, you don't really want to be putting a bait band around a, a wicker neck and pulling it because you're straining on the, the neck all the time. The last option, which is the option we will use, is the wire. And pure and simply, the wire literally goes, you put your bait on, you put it inside the pot, you push it up through the neck, through the willow in the gaps here, you fold it over and you just lock it like that and that's it it's done the bait's in there the only thing we've got to be a little bit cautious of is putting the bait on too fresh a bit too fresh if it's really fresh or using fresh mackerel because conger eels will come into the pot and they grab hold of the bait and they'll actually try and back out if they're not in the pot pot and they've got the tail sticking out they go backwards and they will literally rip this and they'll keep ripping this till they tear it free of the pot and because it will normally holds here, what happens is this ends up like a cheese wire and it will cut up through the neck and damage the neck. So that's the only thing we've got to be a little bit cautious of is avoid using, well, mainly fresh mackerel. And it's oily. That's very fresh. Now, they don't like their bait when it's gone off a little bit. So that's the way we'll get around that. Now, this video is going to be coming in two parts. The first part is going to be obviously the build, which you've just watched just now. And the second part will be revisiting the pot during the summer now it's going to be a little while before that video comes out pure and simply because we want to run a good test on it to see how well it does i'm not just going to put it down catch a couple of things and say yeah it works and then that's the end of the video i like to do a full run coverage of it over several weeks or months so like i say that's the video that's yet to come and at the moment we haven't even got the boat in the water but once it goes down this will go in and we'll start running the test to see how well this done does. You might even see it in a few other bits of bits and pieces in other videos as well as we progress with it. Now, if you don't want to miss any of that, don't forget to subscribe. That way, you'll um, 
will get notified if you press the bell icon of any future videos coming out. It doesn't cost anything, it's a free service, there's no fee, anything like that. All you do is press subscribe, and, but just remember, if you want to be notified, you need to press the bell icon to get those notifications when a new video comes out. So there you have it. First wicker pot. I'm really excited, to, to be honest, I'm really excited to see how well this does. Um, it could be a complete disappointment as well, but I'm, I've got a feeling it's going to catch all right. The thing is with this pot, it's not like a net, it's a very, very dark pot, you know, it's very sealed. And whether that just makes it easier to see the hole to get out, we don't know, that's what we're going to find out. But at the same time, they might stay in it, thinking it's like a little cave that they might, like a, you know, when you find them under the rocks in holes, they might use it as, as a place to go in and stay in. This is all part of the experiment of trying this out, just to see what it does. I mean, they used to use wicker pots, obviously, many, many years ago. Most of them were inkwell styled, which is round, but obviously that's a lot easier to make because you just wind the wick around, 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 around until you've got your pot near enough. Whereas this is a little bit more fiddly because of these corners and edges. But with any luck, it'll do well. But like I say, I'm really excited to see how this does. And it's something, like I've said several times now during the video, it's something I've always wanted to put together, just never had the opportunity to do it. But after planting those trees, there it is. And what I'm probably going to do actually is I'm actually going to plant more of the um, the yellow red willow and try and grow it and sort of uh, what do they call it? Coppice, coppice, something like that. But we're going to chop it down so you get nice straight branches, thin branches. And we may do some more things like maybe we'll make a um, inkwell one just for the hell of it, just for fun. But that'll all come in the future. It's just trying out like new things or in this case very old things just to see how these things do anyway till the next video